think this one goes here and this one should go here and this one should go th no you know what this one should go here and this one should go th man this is not working you know what it doesn't really matter Hello and welcome guys, my name is Steve and welcome to this channel. If you're new to this community, if you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe if you aren't already. And as you notice, today we are starting a new video series called Algorithms or specifically Algorithms in Go. I got you covered. I'm going to show you a pseudocode, which means you're going to be able to implement this in really any language. So if you find any value during this video, or if you like what I'm doing, make sure to like and share this video because this is going to mean a lot for me. And you're also going to let others know how we are implementing algorithms and not only. So I'm going to start first with sorting algorithms because I think everybody should know sorting algorithms and as we progress we may touch other kinds of data structures and algorithms but for now let's focus on sorting algorithms specifically the insertion sorting algorithm. So the insertion sorting algorithm really works like sorting a deck of cards. So you have a deck of cards in your hand and you want to sort them out. What you would typically do is take individual cards and place them in to uh, their correct position and at the end of of this whole process you would have the deck of cards sorted out and really the process is exactly the same if you have an array or a slice so without too much further ado let's dive into the overview of this algorithm and let's establish a couple of rules before we start sorting things out so rule number one that I want you to remember is we iterate from left to right and that really means we have an array or a slice and we start iterating from left to right we start picking up a key and as we go we iterate from one position to the other meaning we iterate from left to right rule number two as I said before imagine you have a deck of cards and that basically means you would have to pick up each card meaning we go from left to right and as we go we take each individual card and we position it into its correct position we position it into its correct position so this is rule number two take each individual element and position it into its correct position and lastly rule number three just like in the deck of cards uh, once you start positioning things or positioning each individual card into its correct position the left side the side that we begin uh, sorting out is always going to be sorted so basically means if we position each element on the right side into its correct position on the left side uh, that basically means that the left side is always going to be sorted. So having these assumptions or these simple rules in mind, we can go ahead and explore the algorithm, which is really simple. As I said, it's really simple to implement and it's very efficient at the same time. So this is how the algorithm works. Imagine you have a slice or an array, call it whatever you want, depending on the language you're coming from. So let's go ahead and sort out this slice following those three rules that we explored in the beginning. So first of all, we pick up the key and we're gonna start from index one, meaning we're going to skip the element number one because we just save up one iteration. And the next rule that we've established is position each element into its correct position. And because we begin from left to right, we're basically going to swap out or position the element with index one or the key into its correct position and its correct position is before number five. And going on to the next iteration, as the rule number three says, the elements on the left side are always sorted because basically we position each element into its correct position. So again, following the same rules, we pick up the key and in this case is going to be four and then we do exactly the same thing, position each element into its correct position and basically we just position four between two and five because that's its correct position and again all the elements from the left side are sorted out meaning we have two then four then five and then we have the next key which is six which is basically index number three and yet again we pick up that key and try and position that into its correct position and its correct position is already there meaning we're basically going to leave it as it is. And yet again, on the next iteration, uh, on the left side, all the elements are sorted and the sorted elements I've indicated in green. So we have two, four, five, and six, and we have to do the exact same process. And yet again, we pick up another key and try and position it into its correct position. And its correct position is basically at the beginning of this slice, meaning we're gonna have to shift every one of these elements and then uh, make some space for the, uh, well, uh, this key that we picked up, which is number 
number one and position number one into the first position or in the index zero, meaning we have to shift the rest of the elements. So yet again, on the next iteration, we have everything sorted out on the left side up until the key. And we pick up the last key, which is uh, number three. And we try again and position that into its correct position. And its correct position is between two and four. So again, we go ahead and shift all the elements and make some space for the uh, element number three, which is between two and four. And we position it there. And at the end, we have everything sorted out. And this is pretty much how the algorithm works. As I said before, it's pretty simple. It's simple to implement and it's very efficient. So now that we established a couple of solid rules, we went through the algorithms and you understand how the algorithm works. Let's dive into some pseudocode, which is basically going to look pretty similar from language to language, including Go. So as you can see in this pseudocode, we're primarily going to have two loops and we're gonna have the outer one and the inner one. And then we pick up the key like we did in the algorithm section. And the key is really going to start from the second element because as I said before, we don't wanna waste one iteration. That's why we need at least one element on the left side, meaning we're gonna start from index number one and we're gonna pick key from index number one and we progress until uh, the end of the slice. So defining I or the uh, beginning of the inner loop is a little bit more interesting. Basically, it's going to be equal to the exact same position the key is positioned at minus one. The element which sits next or right next to the key element on the left side and it's going to go backwards. So basically, if for example, a uh, key is index number four, I is going to start from index number three and it's going to go backwards. We decrement uh, the I variable all the time, meaning we're going to reach uh, the beginning of the uh, slice uh, from the left side uh, in order to compare each element on the left side with the key that we pick up. So inside the inner loop, as you can see, we have this small little condition in the while. It's again, while or for, it depends on on your language, but we have a small condition which basically checks that uh, um, uh, the variable i did not reach zero, which means it reached the beginning of the left side, which means we stop the inner loop. And the second condition is really up to you. In this case, we want to sort things ascending, meaning we're gonna check if uh, the specific uh, uh, element on the left side of the key isn't uh, greater than the key itself. If it's greater, it means we have to swap it out or we have to shift it like we did in the algorithm section. Assuming we have shifted all the elements to the right side. Now we have a uh, empty space or a free space for uh, mm, the correct position of the key we have picked up. And all we have to do is simply fill up that position. All right, gents, talk is cheap, but we have to dive into some coding. We have to implement this algorithm, which as I said, is very simple to implement, just like it's very simple to understand how it works. Before we dive into implementing, however, I wanted to show you the repository where you can find all the code, the resources, the presentation notes and all that stuff. So just open up a browser window and make sure to type Type in uh, github.com slash algorithms go slash insertion sort. Here we have really everything from the example, presentation notes, animations, and all that stuff. So that being said, let's go ahead and implement the algorithm ourselves. And first of all, let's open up a terminal window and create a directory and start working on the algorithm, which as I said, it's very simple to implement. So inside the terminal, I'm gonna go ahead and CD into desktop, after which I'm gonna make a directory called, for example, insertion sorting. So I opened up the project inside my ID and let's go ahead and create a file called main.go. So let's say main and let's go ahead and name the package main and then let's say func main. So let's create a function which accepts a slice of int and returns a slice of int after it has uh, sorted the slice out. So in this case, we're gonna work out with ints, but you can really sort out any kind of data. It doesn't really matter as long as it's a sequential data, as long as it's a slice, you can sort it out in any kind of uh, a way, shape or form. So let's say func insertion sort, for example, and uh, let's accept a slice. I'm gonna call this one generically a, and it's going to be a slice of int, and it's going to return back a slice of int once that slice has been uh, sorted out. So first of all, let's go ahead and return this uh, uh, slice called a, after which it supposedly has been sorted out. So let's say return a, make sure we don't have any errors, and then let's go ahead and have two nested loops. So let's say four, and inside this one, we're gonna have another four. So inside the auto loop, let's go ahead and say four uh, j equals to one, and j is gonna go up to uh, the length of this specific slice. 
So len of A and let's say uh, J plus plus. So after that, let's go ahead and define the key and the I variable just like in the pseudocode. So the key is basically going to be equal to uh, A of index I and the I variable is basically going to equal to J minus one. After that, let's go ahead and fill out that while which was present in the pseudocode and in Go, it's really just another four as uh, we defined uh, in this uh, specific example. So let's say four. Let's say i is greater than minus one, and let's say and um, uh, the current element which we're trying to compare with the key is greater than the uh, key itself. So here things are very simple. As I said, we have to shift the elements to the right, meaning we have to say something like a of uh, i plus one, which is the next position, equals to a of index i. And at the end of it, we have to decrement the i so that we go backwards until we reach the beginning of the slice, the beginning of the left side of the slice. So we have to really say i minus uh, equal to one. And just like in the pseudocode, at the end of it, we really have to position the selected key into its correct position. I'm gonna say a of i plus one equals to key. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much on the implementation. As I said, it's pretty simple to implement. Now let's go ahead and provide this or call this function with a couple of uh, data sets and see how exactly this one works. So inside the main function, let's simply say font then print line, insertion, sort. And I'm gonna provide the exact same sequence that we had in the beginning of the slides. So I'm gonna say uh, five, two, four, six, one, and then three. So I'm going to simply go ahead and run this program. And as you can see, we have an error right here because of course the key is not A of I because I is not defined. So I'm gonna say A of index J. And when you run this program, it should give you the correct result. It should give you the sorted uh, array, the sorted slice, depending on the language which you're using yet again. And if we're talking about this specific inner loop, the condition may change, especially the second part of this condition may change. For example, if you want to sort things out in the descending order, or if you have like specific uh, implementations, or you could really uh, just pass in a sorting function, which is a function that returns Boolean, which is going to decide for you what should be the uh, second part of this condition, the second part of the condition of this internal for loop. So now that we've learned about the insertion sorting algorithm, we know how it works. We also implemented this in Go specifically. Let's dive into a couple of facts about the insertion sorting algorithm because obviously it's not a perfect algorithm and there is really no perfect solution or there is really no all-in-one solution which does it all. So we're gonna start with the positives first and the good thing about the insertion sorting algorithm is the fact that it's simple to implement, it's simple to understand and you saw that yourself. It's really simple to understand. It works very simply like, uh, you know, sorting a deck of cards and it's very easy to implement it yourself. Another good characteristic about the insertion sorting algorithm is the fact that it's very efficient. However, it's efficient for small data sets. In fact, because it's so efficient, uh, the fastest implementations of uh, sorting algorithms like quicksort internally uh, check for the length of the data set. And if the length of the data set is not big enough or it's not too big, they would internally use insertion sorting. So it's a very good and efficient algorithm if we're talking about small data sets. Now, if we're talking about about time complexity because everybody out there is talking about time complexity when we're talking about algorithms. It's really O of K multiplied by N, where K is a variable depending on the worst or the best case scenario. So speaking of the best and the worst case scenarios, obviously the algorithm performs differently depending on the kind of data you're giving it to. So the best case scenario is when the entire array or slice is sorted out, meaning the algorithm doesn't really have to do too much. And if we speak about the worst case scenario is basically when the data or the array or slice is sorted, but in the reverse order. What that basically means it's going to apply the maximum number of operations, which makes the algorithm a little bit slow when it comes to big data sets, as I said before. So that, ladies and gentlemen, was the insertion sorting algorithm. As I said before, it's a very simple to understand, simple to implement and efficient sorting algorithm and we're not going to stop at this sorting algorithm. Obviously, we will explore more algorithms when it comes to sorting and more data structures and algorithms in general. Also, before we wrap up this video, make sure to check out the resources section in the description below because there I linked the GitHub repo and all the resources that I've used for this specific video, like presentation notes, coding examples and all that stuff. So make sure to check that out as well. And also, guys, if you found any value by the end of this video, make sure to hit that like button and share this video so that other 
others may know about the existence of this video and they may take some value as well. And of course, if you're not part of this community, if you're not part of this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And without too much further ado, guys, I'll see you in the next video where we talk about a different sorting algorithm, about a different algorithm in general. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.